guys, welcome back to another episode of the channel. If any of you guys are new here, my name's Jeremy. Uh, I am part of DJT, which is Double Day Touring. So I've actually had a lot of interest in the car and the canopy and some questions. So I thought I'd do a video on it and give you guys a walkthrough. Sort of rough, rough cost of what it cost me to do all the stuff, because obviously I built the canopy, trailer and stuff myself. So yeah, crack a cold one and we're gonna get straight into it. So I think we'll start with the front of the car. Uh, we'll check a look at the engine bay here. So it's a 2012 turbo diesel 3 litre Hilux. Nothing too dramatic going on in here. Very stock standard, haven't done anything, not open or anything. Only thing I would say it's got is the Process West catch can. Had that on since new. So that collects all the oil from the intake and it does its job. Chain it out every about 10,000 Ks and barely anything in there, so which is good. So I'd like to put some more power through this engine but I know that these things are known for cracking pistons and blocks. You know, they call them the deep or detonate for a reason. So I think I'll just keep it reliable for now. If I ever do crack the piston or anything like that, I think I'll probably put a 3UZ FE V8 engine in there, which is a petrol engine. So I've seen the guy named Kelvin, he's on, he's from New Zealand. They have their, they have a YouTube page that I've been checking out. Uh, and he told me some information about them, those 3UZs. They seem pretty reliable, pushing up to 300 horsepower on them. So that's a pretty easy conversion to do, he said. The only thing is you go from diesel to petrol, and obviously the price of petrol at the moment is ridiculous, especially if you want to put 98 through a V8, V8 engine. So, and apart from that, got the stock bumper at the front there. Did have a Ironman one on there for a little bit. Uh, I picked it up really cheap for like $300. It ended up being bent, and I didn't realize that until I put it on, and it sort of sat out and it touched the guards in here, rubbed against it. So I took that off. Been you know, on this stock bumper for a while, but I've actually just ordered my new bull bar from Bud's Custom. So that will be here in about 12 to 15 weeks away. So that'll be exciting. I'll be able to do an install video on that and show you guys what's going on there. So moving forward, we've got just a two inch lift on 32s. It's a TJM suspension, and I've also just ordered a VNM 50 mil body lift kit, which is gonna be here on Thursday, so I'm gonna do another install video with that. And then just 16 inch steelies at the moment, had those since I bought the car. They go all right, they're Falcon Wild Peaks as well. They're uh, ATs. And then moving on, we got the clear view mirrors. Just pretty basic ones, the telescopic ones. These are just eBay ones. I think I picked them up for like 300 bucks, but they look exactly like the Clearview ones, so I couldn't complain too much. And then we got the Snorkel. Just a genuine Hilux one, nothing too flash. And then moving on into the cab here. Pretty basic as well. So we've got the roof console with the Unicon mount up there. Then we've also got the iDrive down there. Don't really use that very often. Only when I'm like on the highway if I'm towing the boat. I mean, they don't really do that much. I did buy it when they first came out thinking it was, you know, like a chip tune sort of thing, but it's not. So I just, that doesn't get used very often. And then we just got the Clarion head unit. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory, nothing too special going on there. Handbrake actually works in this thing. Because I've tightened that up a couple of times and adjusted it. So that's one thing that most Hiluxes don't work is the handbrake. So, so moving on from the inside of the cab, we go up to the roof there, which is just a Rhino Rack platform bar. Had that for about a year now. Hasn't seen too much sun fade on it, which is good. Pretty happy with that. Used to hold the awning on as well, the 270 Batwing. But that goes on the canopy now. And if we go into the back seat here, We've got pretty basic as well. We've got the Navigator Organizer Seat Buddy, which has just got, you know, a couple extra radios and stuff like that if we go out bush. Sunscreen, toilet paper, snake bike kit, first aid. All the general basic stuff. And I've also done what they call the, the back seat mod. Which that flips down for a little bit extra room. Nothing too, too crazy going on here. And that flicks back up. And now 
we move on to the exciting part, which is the canopy, which is my favorite part of this whole build. We got Ty in the back there. He's just sleeping at the moment. Having a good time. Going for a bath, so he's a little bit, a little bit fluffy. So I thought I'd get him in the canopy so we can dry off a little bit. So a little bit of uh, history on what the, I used to have on here. So originally I had a mine spec steel tray 1800 by 1800 and I actually started building the canopy aluminium doing TIG welding and a good friend of mine let me come around his and we'd do it together and it just got sort of to that stage where I wanted to do a lot more with it but I didn't have he didn't have the time and sort of vice versa working away so I ended up ripping off the steel tray which was about 350 kilos it took about six of us to get it off and then I got this made up which is a aluminium 1800 by 1800 uh, tray it weighs about 60 kilos all up which is wicked and the canopy is actually all steel so you've got 50 mil steel tube here which goes up and then on the back there you've got 50 as well and then you've also got all your marine carpet inside and then these doors that are fabbed up are actually steel as well, gale steel with mesh so we're getting canvas done shortly I just haven't had the time to do it to organize getting canvas but eventually we'll have the black canvas which will come down the sides here and then obviously just some locks both keep the same one on each side originally the canopy was built for Ty as a dog box because he sheds hair being a German Shepherd so I really originally built it so that way he could chill in the back here this could get as dirty as it wanted we didn't have to worry about backing it out because it's a canopy it's going to get sand dirt you know from the beach in there and everything so that's what it originally was and then i started fitting it out with the kitchen drawers and then now the fridge which is over here as well which is the bushman's 85 liter which is yet to go in i'm still playing around with the electrics for that but that's brand new ready to go and also I used the Unimig Viper to build this whole canopy. Wicked little thing. It weighs like five kilos. It's so easy to use. If you've never welded before, I definitely recommend picking up a Unimig because they're super easy to use. You literally just have to set your wire and your amps, sort of thickness of your metal, and then you're good to go. So you literally can't go wrong with it. So moving back to the other side of the canopy now, I'll just close this. That way Ty can lean against it. That the way Ty. I'll move around to the back actually first so we've got dual spare tires on the back there and the crash pad bags which are the storm ones and then also got a light bar down the bottom there which is a king's one which i cut down to suit this space here because it was i think a 55 inch and it was just too big it came out to about here so i've cut it down to whatever size i think maybe 37 39 and that fits perfectly there that's all plug and play into here and then also while we're down here as well, we've got the TJM 450 shocks and just your leaves and then a straight through three inch exhaust with no muffler on it that I've also done the welding for myself, which comes straight off the turbo. So it's a mandrel one, gives it a nice note, nothing too sloppy. And then in the back there is just a rubbish bag, and extra straps if I need them. And then same with this side, which is our cooking side which is that first video I showed you guys about the pull-out kitchen and what we have in our drawers. So it actually sits on a bit of wood to clear the gap of the steel there. So that way you get that nice, easy pull like that. And then same obviously with the pull-out kitchen. It obviously it's got that tiny little bit of gap there and that's just sitting on some, some feet which are about 50 mil as well. So all up, I would say the cost of the canopy so far, building it with materials, the tray cost about 1400 and then to do all this myself, I got all the steel from Medallia Steel, uh, a couple, couple weeks in the garage getting all my angles right before I actually welded anything, and then obviously painting it, it's not powder coat or anything, it's just spray can, which is fine because it hasn't chipped anywhere, it looks fine. 
and then doing the carpet as well just came from Bunnings so I'm gonna put all the prices of what everything costs on the screen I'm also gonna put some some during photos of building the canopy on the screen for you guys to have a look at just a couple photos nothing too crazy of obviously different stages I was at Just gonna jump on the roof real quick and I'll show everyone what I've done on top of the canopy to be able to hold the roof rack that I've got. So just one sec, I'll get up there. So this is what we've got going on up top here. We've got channel here to suit these channel nuts and it literally, if you wanna undo something, you literally just unscrew it, move it, tighten it up and you're good to go. So it's got these bars here, these vortex bars just some cheapies from Rhino. Didn't want to go with the platform because I've already got the platform there. And when the body lift comes in, it'll match the height. So it'll be like one big one. But yeah, so I'll show you what I use in the channel there to give you guys a rough idea. So it's just these channel nuts. M6s and M8s. You can get M10s. And then they literally just slide straight in. In there. Like that and then you tighten them up and you can put anything you want on top here and this thing's really sturdy it's, it's uh, bolted and then welded in as well so yeah definitely not going anywhere I had the awning on there on our last trip to ledge point and that awning weighs about 30 kilos and it did the job awesomely because the weight was distributed across the whole roof instead of just having it on this channel which I originally had it on but having the vortex bars makes it so that there's weight given on all sides of the roof, not just these corners here. So that's a quick rundown of the canopy. And I'm gonna do, on the screen, I'm gonna put some prices of what it's cost so far to build it with materials, uh, getting these skins made up, folded, all that sort of stuff. Uh, all in all, I'd say roughly around the three and a half to four grand mark. Which is not too bad considering it's custom to the way I want it. As in, it's got the space here for the tyres. So the tyres aren't supported by the canopy. It's supported by the tray and the canopy. And then they've just got wing nuts that hold that together on both sides. And then it's got the welded bit in the middle there. But yeah, so I'll put some prices up on the screen for you guys to have a look at. And... And yeah, that's pretty much the end of this, this episode for this quick rundown. I'm going to do some more videos when the VNM body kit comes and the Buds Custom Bull Bar comes in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for those. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. So feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And me and Ty are about to head off to the beach. Ty! I'll see you later.